right, it is just about, or might be a little bit after nine. Um, hello, hi, and welcome. We are um, at my house for the book talk this week. I wasn't going to let you guys go without a romance book talk. How dare I would do something like that. So um, because of COVID and being precautious, cautious is the word and being cautious and adhering to the Shelby County safer at home directive um, the library is only operating with curbside services right now which means we're not really doing a whole lot of programming in the library which means I'm not there making my videos like I normally do so I'm excited I brought you guys home with me tonight so that way we can still have ourselves a Sarah Loves Romance Novels Book Talk Time. So, and the other exciting thing about being able to do this at home is that I get to, you know, enjoy a little Friday night beverage doing this video with y'all tonight. So, I don't know about y'all, but um, now don't get me wrong. I did not go into 2021 going, this is my year, this is it, new year, new me, everything's going to be great and fabulous um, because we're all, we've all been burned from 2020, but I did think that maybe it was not going to be as chaotic as it is right now. So <laughs> when I decided to come up with um, the topic for this week, I just decided, you know what, I have to share the best and most wonderful books that I have ever read in my entire life with you. Because if there is a time to get lost in the best books, it's right now. So this week, the books I'm sharing with you are, as I said, my absolute favorite books of all time. And because the library is focusing on curbside services, uh, I'm actually, I actually chose books that are available on Tennessee Reads. So these are all eBooks that you can choose. Um, and remember, if you want to get signed up for Tennessee Reads and you haven't done it yet, call us at the library and let us know if you need help and you can put it on your phone, iPhone, Android phone, you can put it on an iPad, you can put it on a Kindle Fire, Kindle Paperwhite, you can put it on a Samsung tab, you can put it on anything. And the great news is, is it is free, free books. Who doesn't want free books at your fingertips? As a matter of fact, I had a gentleman call this morning asking about um, his wife had very kindly given him a Kindle Paperwhite for Christmas. And he said that it's going to bankrupt him <laughs> if he keeps buying books. And he knew that we have uh, ebooks available and he needed to get it set up. So I spent part of my morning this morning helping him get that situated so he can stop paying for books. So, like I said, all three books are available on Tennessee Reads. So even though you can't come into the library and browse around like normal, you can browse on Tennessee Reads, which I'm going to be honest with you, I um, kind of obsess over ebooks. My phone itself is full of ebooks. <laughs> like, uh, my to be read shelf is 55 books long, and they're all ebooks. So, <laughs> that's the difference between an ebook and a physical book. Uh, 55 ebooks takes up no space in my bedroom or my living room, but it takes up a lot of space on my phone. Anyways, so, ebooks. Yay, perfect timing for a situation like we have today, or this time. So, um, oh, let me also apologize. So this should tell you how today's going. I was so excited today because I was going to have a hair appointment. We, I got off work at three and I had my hair appointment at 3.15. I go to Bella Grace Salon right there across the street from the library. I walk in, because I go there quite often. They do other stuff besides hair. They do waxing and facials and all that kinds of stuff. Anyways, I walk in there and there's my hairstylist. I'm like, hey, hi. She's like, hi. We got, I have an, I have an appointment, right? She's like, no, it's next Friday. So here I am. And ladies, you know how this is. If you plan on going and getting your hair done, 
you don't do your hair right because you, you know you're gonna go to the salon and they're gonna make you look beautiful so instead hi y'all you get you get this crazy hair so please forgive me I swear this year's gonna get better anyways so let's start with my let's see where do I want to start actually okay we're gonna start with a book that a former co-worker and friend suggested to me and I ended up reading all the books in the series and being obsessed and this book is and I'm so mad because I have copies of all these books I couldn't find my copy of this book this is Suzanne Rockman's The Defiant Hero and this is actually number two in the Troubleshooter series and it's okay you don't have to read number one. And as a matter of fact, my girlfriend told me, don't read number one, <laughs> start with number two. Now I did go back and read number one at some point, but y'all, Suzanne Brockman's The Defiant Hero, number two of the Troubleshooter series. I'm not exaggerating when I say that I was on an airplane flying across country, sobbing, <laughs> sobbing while I was reading this book sobbing in public as we all do um this is a wonderful book when the first time I read this book I didn't know the term existed this is a time slip book so basically all that means is that you have two main plot points that take place um in different times so we have the a contemporary story and that is Meg and John Nielsen. That's the contemporary hero, hero and heroine. Um, she is an interpreter for the United Nations. She's an interpreter for an Eastern European um, country working at the UN. And the hero is a Navy SEAL, Lieutenant JG. And their story is suspenseful and it's a thriller and she it's one of those stories where um, because she's the interpreter uh, she has all this access to all these people and all this important stuff and they these terrorists kidnap her mother her mother and her daughter and say we're going to kill your mom and your daughter if you don't kill this foreign dignitary so that's when they bring in the United or the Navy SEAL and they you know he has to like try to rescue her and, blah, blah, blah. and so the time slip is that while grandma and daughter are being held hostage grandma starts reminiscing about her time during World War II and that love story that's the love story that made me sob <laughs> was the love story that grandma tells about her experience during World War II and it's just a wonderful oh such a good book so I absolutely 100% recommend Suzanne Brockman's The Defiant Hero and um, if you like it read the entire series it's delicious all right so the next book is a book that the very first librarian that I worked for um, I was a library school library assistant in Jacksonville Florida and I worked at an elementary school and I worked for a very traditional librarian who I loved. She was wonderful and it was also great because she gave me all kinds of experience. Anyways, so she also introduced me to Rosamund Pilcher. I was really young. I think I was 21 at the time, maybe 22, I can't remember. And so I was still discovering what I like to read and she recommended Rosamund Pilcher's The Shell Seekers. This is another saga of a book. Rosamund Pilcher's Shell Seekers is another one that tells multiple stories and it takes place in the Cotswolds of England and it's a it's not I guess it is a time slip but not in the same vein. Um, the main character 
is gifted a painting from her great grandfather, no, her father. Um, she is gifted this painting and suddenly it's worth a ridiculous amount of money, stupid money. And so she's got her sisters and the other family members, they're like, mm, you should sell it and we'll all be happy. And she goes to the cottage by the sea to try to decide what is she going to do about this painting. Oh, Jean, wouldn't you hate to have that um, decision that she has to make? Anyways, um, so it tells the story of the painting is actually called The Shell Seekers. It's a landscape. And you get to find out what the painting's based on and how it's magical. Not magical in a sense of fantasy, but like... Um, the history and the emotion and the love behind the painting and then you also fall in love with the heroine as she's deciding what she wants her life to look like and how does she please her family and herself and all those things as we some of us have had to figure out what to do who do we please um, Rosamund Pilcher is another author that I have read every single one of her books some of them are tones. Shell Seekers is one of them. Very, very large book. And some of them are like tiny. I can't even look at that. I don't know. Anyways, um, she's a wonderful author and she's no longer with us, but she's wonderful. So I absolutely recommend Rosamund Pilcher. As a matter of fact, my sister in law um, suffered a tragedy. And I didn't know what to do because I'm bad at like bad things happening. I don't know what to do with people. I don't know what, I want to hug you, but maybe you don't want to be hugged. And like, you're going to cry. It's going to make me cry. And is that going to make things worse for you? I don't know. So me being me, I sent her the shell seekers. Because <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to do. Maybe if you read this book, you'll get lost in it. And it'll make you feel better for a little bit. I don't know. So, hey. Even if you don't read it, maybe it's a book you can send to somebody who also is going through a tough time and you want them to enjoy or get lost in a book. I don't know. Like I said, today's the day that we all need to get lost in a book or two. Okay. Done, done, done. My all-time favorite book ever. Um... By the way, all these books are five-star rated books by me. But um, this is my favorite book of all time. I love it so much that I have it in hardback and paperback. And honestly, I'm pretty sure I've got an anthology back there of the author that uh, there's another copy of it. I love this book. This is... Circle of Friends by Maeve Benchy. Circle of Friends by Maeve Benchy. Um, I've mentioned before about catching movies on TV uh, as a preteen or a teen. Movies that I probably shouldn't have seen. And then I became obsessed with them. Well, that's what Circle of Friends was. I, It was like on Cinemax. Like it's not, it's not Skinemax. It was on Cinemax, and I was, I think I was like in eighth grade, and I was obsessed with it, oh my god. Chris O'Donnell, Mini Driver, hello, and Mini Driver, okay, this isn't Skinny Mini Driver, this is Curvaceous Mini Driver with big curly hair and a wonderful, thick Irish accent from 1950s small town Ireland, not Glen to be specific. I guess I thought as um, a portly 12 year old in rural Oklahoma that I felt like I was mini driver. So anyways, so after I watched the movie, I then went 
and found the book because my mom used to buy me books all the time, like all the time. That was the one thing she would never say no to was a book. And so she bought me this adult romance novel <laughs> when I was 12 years old. And you can see, like, this book, this book has experienced some love, some like super duper love. Anyway, so let me tell you the story. This is the story of Benny Hogan and um, her best friend Eve. They are two girls growing up in 1950s rural England, or rural um, Ireland in Knock Glen. This is a time where the Catholic Church rules everything and women are supposed to be following the traditional role of wife and all that good stuff. And she, Benny herself is additionally under pressure because her parents own a dry goods store in their tiny little town and it's not doing great and what they really wanted to do is stay and work at the store yada 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 well she ends up getting a scholarship to trinity college in dublin so small town benny ends up in dublin 1950s dublin and um, there she meets Chris O'Donnell. That's not his name. I don't even know his name now that I think about it. Um, Jack Foley. There we go. Jack. Okay, sorry. Now I can hear, can hear Benny saying her name. Or I can hear Minnie Driver saying his name. Um, meets Jack Foley. And he is the star of campus. He's a big rugby player. His dad's a doctor. He's going to be a doctor. And yada 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 and uh there's so many twists and turns in this book so there's another character that they meet in college nan mahone oh she's so glamorous but is she really what does nan bring um what i love about this book if you have seen the movie you know how the movie ends what i will say is that the book does not necessarily end that way and I think the ending is better in the book and for a portly isolated 12 year old girl who felt like this isn't where I'm supposed to be um, the ending of circle of friends the book was more in line what I needed to hear <laughs> and less of what um, you know, people would assume that you needed to hear. It's a wonderful book. There's so many twists and turns, so much betrayal and um, growth. And just, she learns to be herself. She learns to love herself. She learns about confidence. She learns about the importance of family and the right context, because that's important. You know, we all think we need to be 100% available to our families at all time. What does that leave us, right? So, Maeve Benchy's Circle of Friends, um, another author that I have read every single one of her books, except for the last, the one that just came out a week, a week at winter. Um, it's actually still one of the new books at our library. I will say that Maeve Benchy has also passed away. Boo. I don't know why all my favorite authors keep dying. Anyway, um, like so much, I love Maeve Benchy so much that a couple years ago, a few years ago, when I started working at an elementary school as a librarian, one of my students' names were Ma was Maeve, and I was like, Maeve? Your name is Maeve? I love the name Maeve. And I'm her friend. I don't think Maeve appreciated how much I love I know Maeve didn't like that I liked her name because she told me her name was something else and I called her that other name for the longest time and then finally her teacher was like yeah no her name's Maeve I was like well, she told me her name was Sophie no her name's Maeve anyways um so that is it the three books my ultimate most favorite books of all time Maeve Benchy's Circle of Friends Rosamund Pilchers, The Shell Seekers, and Suzanne Brockman's The Defiant Hero. 
So if you're someone who likes um, suspense, thrillers, and some romance, and this one's pretty hot, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I go with Suzanne Brockman for The Fiant Hero. But also know that if you're in public and reading it, don't be surprised if you start crying. Um, if you need to get lost in the Cotswolds in a thatch roof cottage, may I recommend Rosamund Pilcher's The Shell Seekers. And if you are still wondering where your happy ending is, happy ever after, go with Maeve Benchy's Circle of Friends. All right. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope to see you guys again and do this again. Um, next time, I want you guys to ask me some questions because I want to talk to you. All right? Oh, there's my child. She's been hanging out. All right. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. The library is open 10 to 3 tomorrow. Once again, only curbside services. If you need printing, faxing, things like that, give us a call. Let us know. We can help you over the phone and we can still do some print. We can still do printing and faxing as well. So... I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy, and I will see you all next time. Bye now.